Elisa, we have a problem. We came up with a strange idea. We thought nobody would come. We could have a cool time. But look at this. What are we going to do now? I didn't prefer anything, so hmm, I don't know. Let's play the song again. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We are going to talk about Napoletano, one of the most fascinating, for me, we use well, fascinating dialect of Italy. But this is not going to be just a talk about a dialect. It's going to be a declaration of love for one of the most fascinating cities in Europe, as far as I feel. Okay, I don't know who has been to Naples before. Okay, all right. Um, we're going to talk about the city as such. We're going to talk about a bit uh, about the um, dialect. We're going to talk about the culture, and um, we are, yeah. We hope that we can transmit some of this passion and enthusiasm, and um, so that you would all, at one time of your life, go to Naples or maybe several times. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so, many of you have been to Naples. Um, many do not know where Naples uh, is. So, where is Naples? How far from Rome? Who does it know? Very good. Very good. I didn't pay him either. Yeah? For the answer. N no, by train it's one hour. If you take a, a quick train, one hour, ten minutes. And if you if you are if we are so unlucky, someone told you to take the slowest train, stopping at every station. Yes, it can take two hours and a half. But uh, there is there are many trains and it takes only one hour. Okay. So normally, when you like um, a language or in this case a dialect, you also like the the city. So I wanted to for those of you who haven't been there, I wanted to show you a bit of Naples. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is by Jay. So it's very picky. I just wanted to show you something. So this one is uh, also. Do you know the area where it is? Yes. Where? Campania. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I meant uh, this place. So it's in Naples in Posillipo. So and this one is the um, is the historical center. This part. Anyone knows how it is called? Do you see? Very good, very good. Spacca, Spacca Napoli means that Naples uh, is divided into two parts uh, and it's very it's from the time of the Greeks and Romans. In Naples there is the, um, the second most famous uh, uh, theater in Italy. There are many, uh, there are four castles. Um, so, okay, many squares but a very nice one. And of course, if you like Naples or if you get to Naples, you, you will try many different things, uh, which are very nice. Do you know the names? Anyone knows the names? Is it right? Sfogliatella. Sfogliatella, okay. And this one? Bacaba. Yeah, very good. I don't know whether you can see the, uh, the one on the top. Do you know what it is? No, it's not a pizza. It's Gnocchi alla Sorrentina. Okay, so this one is a pizza. And uh, so um, it is said that Margherita was uh, invented in Naples, of course. Uh, I don't want to discuss whether it's true or not. <laughs> I, I hope you all had lunch so we can leave this picture for a moment. <laughs> I mean, how did you come up with this idea? Because it was Elisa who, you know, convinced me to convinced talk. You. Yes, I, yes. I yes. paid him, I tried She easy. paid me a lot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every so, day I have a So, how come? Where are you from? So, oh, I'm from Naples, uh, but I couldn't speak a word of Napolitan and not even understand it until I was 16. And because I, when, uh, I, um, when I was a child, I was told that the speaking dialect was uh, for, I'm sorry, for, so I didn't say it myself, for uneducated people. So I didn't understand it and I didn't speak it. But then I understood that to understand, it's very, uh, that it, for me it's very important to understand um, people, mentality, culture, and uh, uh, especially since I lived there until I was 20, I did want to interact with people. And uh, so I started to learn, oh, to understand it and to learn it. 
Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but what about you? I mean, are you Napolitan? You look my, a bit like it. I look, yeah, do. <laughs> I, um, my passport is not Napolitan, but my heart definitely is. Uh, and, and my stomach as well. <laughs> no, I'm um, Austrian and my connection to Naples and the local dialect is actually... Um, the, um, Tim was speaking today about a Slovene girl you met in Bolivia or... Yeah, okay, I like that. So I um, used to live in a, a family in Sao Paulo uh, that were of Napolitan origin, but they were second generation Napolitans, but they still um, kind of maintained their roots and they listened to a lot of Napolitan music. So uh, only after uh, having lived with them, I actually went to Naples and, and fell in love with the city. And for me, it's, it's a fascinating place, as, as I said. Um, it's, um, it's so historical, it's so full of love, joy, uh, life, and it's, it's a great place. However, it's not Venezia, it's not Rome, it's not the place that would like easily open up maybe to you. So you need a little, you know, you need to blend in and the best way to do this is by learning, among others, the local dialect. So, and Daniel is going to tell us a bit more about grammar and the vocabulary, and then we're all going to speak a bit in Napolitan. Okay, so this is going to be the uh, drier part of this whole presentation. So, we are going to talk a little bit about phonetics, we're going to talk about grammar. I'm going through this really quickly. Um, oops. So, can I move here just for a moment? Fine. <laughs> okay, so first of all, um, what's really important is um, most of the consonants, many of the consonants become softer than in uh, standard Italian. So as you can see, like the ch, as in ch, chi, Italian, becomes more like a sh, so is cerca, cercare. The k, as in ka, ko, ku, would be more like a g. So it's not campare, it's campa. So campa means to, to live. Um, P becomes a B, so it's not pozzo, it's pozzo. Yes. So very, very um, typical is the schwa sound at the end. So that's a big advantage over uh, Italian, standard Italian, Spanish, Portuguese. You, in Napolitan, you don't really have to learn gender of the nouns because you <laughs> could just finish every word in uh. Okay, it's really a very nice advantage. And um, then the S becomes a SH before D, uh, not before D and T, but before P or uh, M or B, so it's SHBIS. Yeah, it's not SPIS, it's SHBIS. Okay, so actually these, uh, all these rules apply not only to the dialect, they also apply um, to many people speaking a mixture of dialect and Italian, okay? So this could be, if you, if you hear these things, chances that the speaker is from Naples are quite big, okay? Um, <clears throat> uh, very typically, uh, Napolitan is the change from D to R, so rimane instead of domani, uh, or vere instead of vedere. Uh, G often becomes a y, so yuca instead of giocare, or giornata instead of giornata. Then a P, that's also very typical, becomes a k, so you would have q instead of più, or you would have uh, chiangere instead of piangere, or chiove instead of piove. Okay, then um, there are a lot of double uh, consonants in, in uh, Napolitan um, and they fulfill certain uh, grammatical rules as well. So first of all, um, in the plural you would have a femmina, which is the woman, but the women would be e femmina, so you would put the stress uh, on the, the first e. <clears throat> and then um, there's one grammatical thing which is really interesting that, that uh, Napolitan still has a neutral um, gender for nouns. So uh, without an article, you don't really see any difference. It means that all animated things are neutral. Uh, there's no difference in terms of um, the word as such, but when you see them with an article, then the first 
consonant would be doubled. So this is really quickly articles o, a, nu, na, and uh, when it starts with um, a vowel, then it's double L, so it's lom, nom, ecumbagna, which a uh, is always the plural article. Pronouns very much like uh, standard Italian, the only difference is is and es, and then it's nuia, vuia, okay? So vuia uh, is also the form of addressing one person if it's um, in a polite way, where in standard Italian you would say lei, it would be vuia, so you would not say parla l'italiano, parla napoletano, you would say parlate, okay? And I just wrote down no fascist connection because some of you might know that in the Mussolini area, Mussolini tried to change lei to voi, but uh, some people in the north might think that, you know, the people are fascist, but it has nothing to do with that, okay? Um, the uh, attached pronouns uh, are very typical, so you could say mio uh, frate, but normally you say fratmo or you say uh, mammeta, your mother, and then uh, demonstrative pronouns kista, kille, which is also used for the third uh, person in pronouns. Okay, then uh, verb, conjugation, quite straightforward. What's interesting is that Napolitan has, uh, like Spanish and Portuguese, two verbs for to be. One for, as in Spanish and Portuguese, um, one uh, regarding general information and one regarding places where you actually are. So when you say, I am in Naples, you don't say, so song, you say, sto, sto a Napoli. Okay? Um, then, as uh, in, in many parts of Italy, southern Italy and in Toscana, as I learned yesterday, the um, passato prossimo is not used as much as the passato remoto. It's like in, in Latin America where they use more, you know, not the combined um, forms. Uh, you have two verbs for to, to have. Uh, one is purely auxiliary, which is ave. So you would say ad parlata. And uh, the other one, uh, like in Spanish, if you actually own something, you would say tene, so tenga, tiene, tena, tenima. And uh, the verb ave is also used for I have to. So very famous sentence is, what shall I do? What do I have to do? Kajja fa. So everyone can say that. Kajja fa. Kajja fa. Okay, and then um, just to uh, end the grammar thing, this is again the same construction as is in most Romance languages. This is the future tense, so you would put the verb to have, ave, at the end of the verb. So you would have, uh, I will speak, pallaraja, you will speak, pallaraja, and so on. Okay? So. You might not have in mind all the things we said, but still um, try to, to um, understand what they're saying. This is going to be in Italian and in local dialect. Now, uh, this is, I don't know, for those of you who are not uh, aware of this movie, this is uh, Benvenuti al Sud, which is actually a remake of the Bienvenue chez les Ch'tis. It's the same story, just that the guy from uh, Milan is sent to the south, not to Naples, but to a place a bit further south, and um, it's quite fine. The sudden joy. Alice in Bolton. Alice has regalado a fusil a Raoul. How can I always? No. Put the mic next to. E fichi bianchi del Cilento. Hey, allo, spuzzoliamo. No, but my computer is enough, but it should be here, it's possible to switch. No, 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 no. You put, put, put the mic Okay. No, 
hlasitosť tam zdrojí. Dobre. Ok, so we'll be trying to make this. Mi abbiamo confuso. Ma tutto sapete come si dice quando uno sta proprio confuso? Assai, assai, assai. Uno quando prende il fischi per fiasche. Oh cazzo, ma banca l'acqua. Il pene per il chiosco delle bibite. <ride> Comunque non è difficile parlare come noi. Basta togliere l'ultima lettera da una parola e il gioco è fatto. Per esempio telecomando diventa telecomando. Bicchiere diventa un bicchiere. Beh, se è così è facilissimo. Sono capace anch'io. Il piatto diventa un piatto. La forchetta diventa la forchetta. Il coltello, un coltello. Uomo, uomo. E tu c'hai da accise. Ma direttore, però tutte queste lettere non le vanno perse. Sì, direttore, noi qua non buttiamo niente. Ma noi recuperiamo tutto, direttore. Per esempio una semplice vocale diventa una parola fatta. Per esempio l'ai diventa affermativo. Diventa eeeh. La O è avvertimento. Per esempio uno dice, oh, ecco, okay, valente se ne faceva, magari ho colto, si è attigiato. Oh. La I per esempio significa imanaggia I, I, andare, I, andare. Eh, uh. La U e la si aggiungono insieme, diventa stupore. Per esempio uno vede una bella donna, dice, wow. Oh. Oh. Poi per esempio vince un terno. Wow. Oh. Oh. Per esempio arriva il direttore da Milano che non si aspettava assolutamente che potesse arrivare da un momento all'altro. Wow. No. Wow. Oh. Ma ho provato a ordinare un piatto. No, finché fra di noi è un conto. Sì, 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 sì. fate la prova pratica. Eh. Era una buona idea. Yeah. Yeah. Buttatevi He's senza paura. Try to order yeah, yeah. the dialect now. Yeah, yeah. Eh. Cameriere! Cavaliere! Eh, quando viene a così? <laughs> Dove devi dire ui? <laughs> ui! <laughs> Arriva. <laughs> Senta, noi vorremmo ordinare il piatto. Noi volessimo spuzzugliare un poco, non senza la lì, dire non piavo cazzo, ma banca l'acqua. Ma stiamo con capio niente, sono del mestre, sono due mesi che sono qua. Io, ma io! Perché ridevo? Say so he was laughing because uh, the, the, the waiter, he was trying to order a Napolitan, but actually the, the waiter was from Venice. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, um, now we spoke about grammar, we spoke about uh, phonetics. Um, vocabulary is interesting because some of the words are derived, uh, unlike Italian, uh, from other languages. So you could say um, the bottle opener, for instance, is cavatappi uh, in Italian, and in uh, Napolitan it's from the tiro bouchon, it's tira bouchon. Uh, or um, orange, arancia, portual from Portugal. Ha. Ah, okay. So um, there are a lot of Spanish words in, in Napolitan dialect because uh, Naples has been under Spanish and Catalan rule for 300 to 200 years. Okay. So um, uh, many words are actually derived from, from Spanish, but there's one f very important false friend, which is guapo. And guapo doesn't mean handsome as in Spanish. It means camorista. Okay, so mafioso. Yeah? Okay. So now we are, we are going to, uh, to say some words in Napolitan. So when you want to say hi, you can say we. Oui. 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 Okay. Uh, when you say, uh, want to say something like, uh, um, also when you want to call someone, I say, who are you? Who are you? Mm -hmm. or, or of course the combination, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone. Oui. 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 Very good. Okay. Um, if you want to have a coffee, you can say Pigliano Cafe. Pigliano Cafe. Very good. Assai. Assai. Okay. Um, yam, you can say yam or yam ya. Uh, yam ya is when you really say, okay, it's enough, let's go. Otherwise, you can say just yam. Yam. Uh, yeah, yam. And there is a song, I don't know whether you know. After Daniel will perform it. <laughs> he doesn't know, but it's going to be for me. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, also for Nicole. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, everyone, yam. yam. Yeah, so now, afterwards, uh, if uh, you want to go somewhere to eat or something, you say yam. Yeah? Yam. 
Okay, if you want to say uh, you go to Naples, so you don't know many words, and maybe they ask a question, and you want to say then, I don't know, then you say, Nuno Sac. Nuno Sac. Very good. Are you Napolitan? <laughs> so, I think you get a little bit the feeling of the whole thing. So, you could say, Nuno Sac. Okay, but it sounds better if you say, Nuno Sac. And then when you, when you do like this, it's even better, okay? It's a stereotype, but it's fun, you know. <laughs> and then you can say, ah, uh, for example, you can afterwards you can say Arovaya. So where are you going? Yeah, Arovaya. Very good. And then you can say um, that you are going to another presentation, and you say Yam, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can already have a small, uh, short conversation in Napolitan. Okay. And then if you're in Naples and you want to ask for a, a place where you can eat, you can say, scusate, uh, arrivo a mangia, e a mangia. Yeah, I, it's a bit longer, so now it's already level uh, A2, yeah? Scusate. Scusate. Arrivo a e a mangia. Arrivo e a mangia. Very good, very good. Okay, and uh, for example, you could say, I would like uh, a good pizza. Volesse una bella pizza? Okay, and then you want to ask. So if you do this, obviously the, the person, the Napolitan person, is gonna ask you, paisa. Paisa is the same as guaglio. Paisa is a little bit older. So then we say paisa. Parlate napoletano. Parlate napoletano. <laughs> okay. So now some uh, gestures. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can we say it afterwards when we are finished with the questions? <laughs> so I think it's better afterwards because otherwise we don't know. Yeah? Okay. So um, when Daniel doesn't behave properly and it, this happens very often, <laughs> then I say, Mannaggia, si te piglia. Yeah? Uh, can you try to repeat that? Mannaggia. Yeah. And with the gesture, of course. I didn't see the gesture. Yeah. yeah, very good. Okay. And if you want to say someone is being a bit, um, a bit dull, uh, you can say um, like this. So please do it to do your neighbor. Then, no, so not all. You're not trying. You're not trying. Yoni. Yeah? Okay. Okay, and then I need two hands. So it happens very so not very often, but I cannot say that uh, here I've been always on time. So, <laughs> um, and then uh, Daniel didn't do it, but he could have done it. He could have done tovolissem over. Yeah, can you do that to do your neighbor as well? Tovolissem. Very good, really, yeah, very very good. So. Just let me say, because it might sound stereotypical, and it's it, the whole thing, of course, we are exaggerating a little bit, and we really don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But Naples is a place that is, I call it, it's an overdose of Bella Italia, and it is, but in a positive sense. So these things happen when you take a, a tram in Naples, or you take the, the bus, it is a constant, wherever you go, restaurant, uh, taxi, drive, whatever. It is a constant um, work of arts. It's a theater play and it's, it's fantastic and you have to be open for this. So you, you will eventually see people doing this all the time, okay? However, it doesn't mean that every Neapolitan is like this, okay? So please don't misunderstand this. I think he's more Neapolitan than me because when he speaks. <laughs> Um, okay, so some some expressions, fa ricotta, okay? You know what the ricotta is? Ricotta cheese. Cheese, yeah? So that means to be very lazy. Uh, then the, one sentence is very famous, it's from a local actor from Naples called Toto. And uh, the sentence is, ca nishuna fes. Here nobody is stupid. It means when you have a problem with someone, um, you could say, like, we both know what it's all about, okay? So it's like, don't take me for stupid, but I also don't take you for stupid. 
okay. let's say they could try to say to the neighbors again, Okay, then if, you know, again, she takes ages and I could, I could say, Facim una cosa di warna. So uh, let's do something which uh, ends in the end, at the end of the day. So it means facim una cosa di warna. And uh, when you want to say lots of, you can say nu kuofana. Kuofana is actually part of the car, so hood. And you can say nu kuofane, and then you can say any other word, yeah? Like nu uh, kuofane gent. Okay. And then a very famous uh, sentence from a movie, it's Ada Passa Nottata. It's uh, when, um, uh, when there is a bad situation and uh, you think, okay. I know we are in a very bad situation right now. Uh, no, not right now. And I say, ada passa nottata. Okay. So now we are going, I hope, we are going to hear something. Uh, it's a very, very funny um, Neapolitan lesson. I hope you will uh, hear it. Buonasera, grazie. Il napoletano non è un dialetto. È una vera e propria lingua con le sue regole grammaticali fisse. Vi faccio qualche esempio. Prima di tutto ci sono parole che vanno assolutamente ripetute due volte, altrimenti non si riesce a dare il giusto senso alla frase. Per esempio, lentamente, chiane chiane. Adagio, che è molto simile, non è chiane chiane, ma cuonce cuonce. Completamente, san san. Meticolosamente, pil pil. Disteso, luong luong. Che se uno sta disteso rigidamente diventa tisic tisic. Uh, just a question, do you understand uh, uh, this? So, I just want to say, in Neapolitan there are many words that you repeat two times, uh, like uh, 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 we heard in another talk the other day, uh, you repeat it two times uh, um, to give another meaning, like mo, it's now, mo, mo, it's right now, yeah? Okay. Difficoltà maggiori si hanno con all'ultimo momento, ngan, ngan, e di nascosto, aum, aum. Poi ci sono gli avverbi di tempo, adesso, mo. In questo momento, mo, mo. Basta ripeterlo due volte. E la stessa regola vale anche per il passato. Allora, tan. In quel momento, tan, tan. Poi ci sono gli aggettivi possessivi, mio, tuo, suo. Che in napoletano si mette soltanto l'iniziale dell'aggettivo alla fine della parola stessa. Per esempio, mio padre, pat, m. Tuo padre, pat, t. Dovete fare molta attenzione perché suo padre non è patas. Mo pate kill. È irregolare. Grazie. Il napoletano... Il napoletano ha il verbo eccere. Il verbo eccere è un verbo unico al mondo, significa eccolo. Però i napoletani distinguono se una persona è vicina o lontana, se è singolare o plurale. All'indicativo presente il verbo eccere fa o i canno, il loco, il lan, che al plurale diventa i biccan, i biglioghi e billan. Quindi, come vedete, il napoletano è più preciso dell'italiano, ma a volte non si capisce niente. Una volta feci un viaggio da Napoli a Milano in auto con un amico e lui a un certo punto mi disse in dialetto per la strada di Pavia, pago io, disse Pavia, Pavia, Pavia. This is true. Si è capito soltanto lui, per me era Pavia al cubo. Grazie, I love it, Pavia. Ok, now you didn't know, but you are going to sing a song. In Neapolitan. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the lyrics will be written, so we will try like this. Otherwise, I prepared another slide where you can uh, see the lyrics. So, maybe before we start, just what I um, would like to add is that this dialect has among eight to ten million speakers, and it is a dialect that has a very, very lively uh, culture. So, there's a lot of music, there's a lot of you know, books and, and all sorts of poems and stuff. So this is, this is a very famous song. Ma se vede tutto il 
disse Essa nova nefonesta E capisce come è bella A città e bulle Come è bella, come è bella Just a second, can you see the lyrics? Is better than no? Uh, so I will put the song and then uh, the the Grazie sai. Okay, we have two. Uh, uh, how many more minutes do we have? Okay, so two more. Um, two more songs. Oh, 
We had him already at the beginning. You're too late. <laughs> I'd like to know though how it sounds like cursing in Serbian though. A little yeah, bit. yeah, we will do it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, uh, well, the tarantella. The tarantella. Okay. Okay. There is. Um, we're going to show you a scene from a movie. Uh, with a, a very famous actor, a Neapolitan actor who died already 10 years ago, the more. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so uh, this is in pure dialect. Okay, let's see if you understand. Hey, no! Ma <laughs> Ai ti no, scusate, andate a vedere chi è sto cornuto che ti ha mai chiesto a che qua non si può faticare, non si può faticare, ti, ti fai conoscere tutto qua. I don't know whether you understood, he said, I was watching the news and at a certain point even the presenter said, can you go please and see who is screaming like that? Volevo sapere solamente tu che facevi, loro vanno a cinema, tu che fai, via. Perché si è antipatico? Ah, ah, antipatico no, eh? No, antipatico. No, antipatico no. Perché non c'è miseria parla troppo, non fai dire una parola a una persona. E eh, allora se uno che parla troppo non sono antipatico. No, se uno che parla troppo è antipatico. Ok, mm -hmm. okay so this one is very, very short. Um, the very, I think, it, I really like the philosophy behind it. I hope you understand it. Cinema, così, e rimane parte. Ci rimane una a Firenze a due du zia Andò. È nata a volta a Firenze, è nata a volta a zia Andò e poi non parte mai. Se tu, cioè, se ti sto dicendo che parte, parte, no? E poi non... Ma non va, grazie, non ce la faccio più. Cioè, quello che è stato è stato, basta, ricominci da tre. Da zero? Eh? Da zero? Ricominci da zero? No, signor, ricominci da... Cioè, tre cose mi sono riuscite in Davide perché ha già perduto pure questo. Che ha già ricominciato da zero? Da tre. So here he says, I'm going to leave, um, I'm going to leave everything and uh, I'm going to start from three. And he said, no, why? The expression is uh, to start from scratch, from zero. He said, no, I did three things good in my life. I don't want to start from zero. <laughs> okay, um, I think this is going to be the end of the presentation. Unfortunately, it's always, you know. <laughs> Okay, so um, there, there was a dance we wanted to show. Do we have Do we have time to show this quickly, or it's one minute? Okay, uh, it's it's a, a dance that is very popular in the south of Italy, but uh, each region has its own, you know, step and melody. So uh, it's called Tarantella, and there is a, a saying which is so uh, successo Tarantella. Yeah, so it's a big chaos. So it actually, you know, we're at the end, so it's a big chaos. So. <laughs> Okay, we have time for a few, five minutes, for a few questions. We will start with the Serbian 
uh, parallels. In the meantime, um, here are some books if you're interested. There's a lot of material. There is, for those of you who live in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, there's a small book uh, that has been published by a guy who uh, strangely has the same name as I do. Um, uh, okay, Serbian. Okay, well, uh, since we are talking about this dialect, uh, I came up with this idea to tell you some kind of false friends that I uh, discovered that is between uh, this language and Serbian. So uh, one of them is, uh, for example, mana, and mana is this hand, you know, uh, in Serbian. Uh, sorry, in uh, Italian, na the, the, from Naples, while in Serbian, mana means weakness, completely different. And another one, even uh, in my opinion more uh, funny, is the word rakia. Uh, can I type it because it is written in totally different way from, okay, um, oops, <laughs> pardon. <laughs> Okay, so in Serbian it is like this, R, A, K, E, J, A, and it is an alcoholic drink, so it is made by uh, fruit, so it can be by uh, apple, by grape, or whatever, while in uh, Italian from Naples, so it is R, A, C, C, a, uh, I mean H, I, and A. So it is actually very beautiful, uh, very ugly woman. So, <laughs> so guys, if you come to Serbia, you should drink this rakia. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any questions? So I'm from Naples, so thank you very much for this presentation. I am, so I learned Romanian because my wife, uh, she's from Romania, and actually uh, there are some words and some sentences which are very similar to in Romanian. So for example, in Romanian you say, cum te chiama, in Neapolitan would be, cum te chiama. Or other words which are very different from Italian and uh, our dialect is, for example, in Italian you say, arancia, uh, but in Napoleon it's oportual, and in Romania it's portocal. So I think it, there, are, there are the same roots, and uh, there are many, many words like that, uh, which are very similar between the two languages. So it's, it's, very, it's very interesting to, to highlight that. So thank you very much. Um, yes, thank you for that. And it has to do, of course, with uh, the fact that there's a lot of Greek influence in, in Napolitan. Unlike the rest of Italy, there is Greek influence as well, but not as much. And then there's uh, like Arabic loan words and so on. Actually, directly connected to this, there were living two Romanian guys in our dormitory when I was a student. And they were talking to each other, and I asked, if they're from southern Italy, and they said, no, we are from Romania, because the languages are sound quite similar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one more? Just one question. Is this language actually spoken in Naples, all over the city, or it's some quarters? Um, there is, of course, a very big difference be between, um, say, more well-off uh, quarters, like, for instance, uh, the, the part, which is the upper part of uh, Naples, which is called Vomero, is the place where um, wealthier people live, and in those areas the dialect is maybe not regarded as, uh, you know, um, yeah. So in, in uh, the lower... Um, quarters of town, like uh, there are the Quartieri Spagnoli, there the language is very much alive, and in areas around the city center, it's, it's very much uh, alive. But nowadays, 
um, like in many other cities, it's quite difficult to find pure dialect speakers. So there would be more like a mixture between dialect and Italian, depending on the situation where you speak. Uh, one more. Great presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I was wondering, yeah, it really was. I was wondering if you think that it's possible to be, I know it's an official language already. Do you think it could be a possibly an official language of Italy? So when you pull up on Wikipedia, it says Italian, Napolitan. No, I mean, I've heard people trying um, to build this, but I was wondering if you know anything about it. Well, it has a certain official status in the state, in Campania, and uh, the university in Naples has uh, some research, and there are things happening to preserve the dialect. Um, I don't think that uh, under this government, or um, I, I think it will take time really for Neapolitan and other dialects to get an official status uh, all over the country. As you know, there are, there are minority languages and official languages, Sardo, uh, Friulano, and others. Uh, but uh, for dialects such as Neapolitan or even uh, Sicilian, I think it's still going to take some time. Okay, um, do we have a minute left for another question? No, we don't. I'm sorry. Uh, you, uh, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> and uh, as usual, we'll be here today, tomorrow, if you have any more questions please come and contact us. Thank you.